In this video, we're going to be looking at inverse functions. So if you're not familiar with inverses at all, look at the video before talking about inverses for relations in general, as well as if you're not uh, familiar with the types of functions, look at the video about the different types of functions and the vertical line test. So quickly looking at the inverse functions. Now, as I said before with regards to relations, with inverse functions, these follow the same so like rules. So it's reflect, not rules, but rather ways you can think about inverses. So it's a reflection in the line y is equal to x. You're swapping uh, the x and y values. And then with regards to the equation, you can just rearrange, swap sort of like x and y in the equation. And there, there's sort of like different ways you can think about it. So with reflection with y equals x, that's a good way to visualize and draw it. But then technically the inverse is when you have swapping the x and y values. So if you have a point, let's say 2, negative 3, then the inverse of that would be negative 3, 2. And then if you do that for every single point or for every yeah, single point that satisfies the equation, you will find that you'll have a new equation which can be found by swapping the x and y and then rearranging for the inverse. So we'll do a quick example. If we have we have the line here y is equal to x just for visualization, we have here the function y is equal, so fx is equal to negative a half x plus y, plus one, sorry. This will give us a point zero one and the x intercept two zero. Now if we want to find the inverse, this is a reflection in line y equals x, but we could also um, like swap every single value as well as change the equation. So if we swap the x and y values in the equation, then we're going to get x is equal to a negative a half y plus 1. x minus a half is equal to negative a half, a half y. We get half y is equal to 1 minus x. y is equal to 2 minus 2x. So 2 minus 2x can be similar as 2, 1 minus x, or you can leave it as this. So when x is equal to 0, we have y is equal to 2. This will give us a point here, 0, 2. And we can see that how that is just swapping those values. And then when x is equal to 1, or when, x is e when y is equal to 0, x will equal 1. So we have this point here. So that point is going to give us 1, 0. And we can see that that is a swap of that. Then we can draw in the line here. So it's another straight line going through. You can see how it intercepts at y equals x. And we'll talk about that later. However, you can see here that each of the points are swapped and it's a reflection in the line y equals x as we have the same distance at every point. So that's a useful thing to know that or in the reflection, especially like for worded questions, if it's a reflection, they have the same distance at every single point along the line y equals x. Okay. So if we have this example, in the green we have the function y is equal to e to the x. In the purple we have the function y is equal to log e to the x. So this is the inverse of the green one. Now if you look here, the green spans all of x. So that means x, the domain of x is all real numbers. And the range of y is when y is greater than 0. But if we look at purple, we'll find that x has to be greater than 0. But y is all real numbers. So the domain is now greater than 0, and the range is all real numbers. And you see there is a correlation, and that's just not coincidence. So if you think about it, the domain is all the x, domain is referring to all the x values. But now, with the inverse, you swap the x and y. So instead of the x, it's now going to refer to the y. So if we're talking about the fx of the domain, then f negative 1x, so that's the inverse, the domain is going to be all the y values, so it's no longer going to be the case. So you can think about the range, which is going to be the y values, will be equal to the domain of fx. And you can see that here. So we had x is all real numbers, so that's the domain. Now that becomes the range. 
the range now becomes the domain. And the reason for this is, as I said before, we've swapped all the x and y values. And this is useful to note. So written down, so the domain of f negative 1x is the range of fx, and the range of f negative 1x is the domain of fx. So if you know the domain and range of fx, then you know the domain and range of the inverse. However, it's important, so this is, so it's important that in a question you state the actual values, even if you use uh, this method to calculate it. So if they said find the range of the inverse, even if you just use the domain of fx, you do have to still state what it is. You can't just say the range of uh, f negative one x is equal to the domain of fx. You do also have to state the actual values unless the question is with regards to general and doesn't have an actual equation. So if you remember before when we talked about functions, one of the functions was many to one. So that was when we had many x values to one y value. So looking at here, here, we have y is equal to x squared. So if we find, if we're thinking about this as a relation, then the inverse relation is going to look like this. And I did this example in a previous video. So you have like y is equal to the square root of x and y is equal to negative square root of x. And you can see that that goes through the line here going through y is equal to x. Now, the only problem with this is that this is a function. y equals x squared is a function. Then y is equal, if you look at this one, this is not a function because if you look at the vertical line test, you'll see that there are many y values to one x value. So even though it's a function, if you found the inverse of this function, it's not necessarily a function. So this is not a inverse function. So not a inverse function. So it's an inverse relation, but it's not a inverse function. That's really important. So when you have a many to one, you can think about it like you're swapping the x and y values. So this is many x values to one y value. But if you swap x and y, the green now becomes one to many. That's because you had many x values to one y value. This swaps to one y value to many, uh, oh, sorry, one x value to many y values. So you've swapped those around, just like before where we did with the domain and range. So because of this, to get an inverse function, because this is not an inverse function, you have to restrict a many to one function to a one to one function. So one to one function will give you a, the inverse will always be an inverse function. So you don't have to worry. If it's one to one, it's a straight line, whatever it is, if it's one to one, don't worry, find the inverse, the inverse will always be a function. However, if you have a many to one function like this parabola, you must restrict it first. And that's because of this, um, it will then, the inverse will become an inverse relation, but it won't be an inverse function. Just quick, a quick revision about the domain and range. Looking at this, the domain is x is all real values, but the range is y has to be greater or equal to zero. If you look at the green, we have um, y is all real values, but now we have x has to be greater or equal to zero. You can see once again, the domain and range have been swapped. But going back to this many to one concept. So if we have the parabola here, this is many to one. So what we want to do is we want to restrict this to one to one. So we can do that two ways. We can say that either x has to be greater or equal to zero or x has to be less than or equal to zero. So you can see that. So we'll start with x has to be greater or equal to zero. So that means we want to get, we get rid of all of this area here. So, that, so the new equation is going to be y is equal to x squared when x has to be greater or equal to zero. Now the inverse of this is if we find the equation, x is equal to y squared, so we swap them, then y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x. But because x has to be greater or equal to zero, this means that y now has to be greater or equal to zero, because remember, x and y have been swapped. Because of this, y has to be the, the square root of x, and then the square root of x is a f function, so that means we know that here, that's y is equal square root of x, so we get an inverse function.
inverse function. You can see that here, y is equal to square root of x. So what we've done is we've restricted the x value, and then this is restricted to the y value, which means that the uh, this inverse relation now becomes an inverse function. So what about if we restrict it the other way? So we can still do this. So y is equal to x squared when x has to be less x has to be less than or equal to zero. So now this is a one-to-one -one function. So that means its inverse will also be a function. So the inverse will also go through the point zero zero, and it will look like this. With regards to the equation, you can swap x and y, and we get y is equal to plus or minus square root x. But now y has to be less than or equal to zero at all points. Therefore, y is equal to negative square root x. So this value here is y is equal to negative square root x. So you can see that the equation, this is now a function, as before it would have had that point here, but the vertical line test is now a function, and you now have this inverse. So if it's many one-to-one -one function, then don't worry, you can just swap it, you don't have to restrict it. However, if it is many-to-one, you must restrict it to a one-to-one, -one, and therefore when you can find the new equation, you'll see that there will be a range restriction, and this range restriction will cause the inverse to now be a function. So in summary, if you have a one-to-one -one function, then you can just swap x and y. But if you have a many-to-one function, restrict to a one-to-one -one function, and then can treat it as above. So you restrict it by limiting x, which will in turn limit um, y of the inverse. So this will limit y of inverse. So you can think about domain and range. What we're doing here is we're limiting the domain, which will therefore limit the, that we're limiting the domain, which will therefore limit the range. This is because the main and range are change. Also, a quick note, remember I didn't mention in the last video, but the asymptotes also change. And this is a common error that pe um, people forget, is when if you have fx and there's an asymptote here at x equals 2, then the asymptote changes because x and y are swapped. So you now have the new asymptote, y is equal to 2.